Parish Services. Call 703-656-9056. Good morning, America. Bone chilling blast. Millions waking up to frigid temperatures as wind chills plunge below zero in many areas. Single digits in New York for the world famous parade. Will the bitter blast and wind gusts keep those balloons grounded? Travel nightmare on one of the busiest travel days of the year. Amtrak train cars separating. Hundreds of passengers stranded in freezing temperatures. The incident under investigation. The president versus the chief justice. In a rare rebuke, Chief Roberts standing up to President Trump after he lashed out at an Obama-appointed judge. What the president is saying this morning. Thanksgiving miracle, residents daring escape from a burning building, falling into the arms of Good Samaritans below. One mother taking a chance, tossing her one-year-old from the third floor. It was just terrifying. How a complete stranger saved her baby from the flames. GMA to the rescue, helping you kick off your holiday shopping. Why the time is now to get those deals. A look at some of the best bargains to grab before you sit down for dinner. Plus, is your turkey still frozen? We've got the solutions for those last minute fiascos. Our Thanksgiving 911 team is here. Live in Times Square, this is GMA. Hey, good morning, America. Happy Thanksgiving. And it is an extremely cold turkey day yes. this morning. We're going to try to warm you up a little bit. By the way, can I just say it's so nice to sit in between you. I am. It the, feels good, doesn't the it? The thorn in between two roses this morning. <laughs> We've got a lot to get to in Times Square, including our all-star dream team of chefs. There they are, and they're here for Thanksgiving 911, one of our favorite traditions. Hey, exactly. Here at they are answering your last-minute questions all morning long to help you get ready for the big holiday feast. And we haven't heard it yet, but we have a turkey uh, sound effect that will be playing. A siren? Yes. No, it's like, there it is. There it is. There it is, yes. The gobble. Uh, yes, very sophisticated. Uh, we're going to start here with that Arctic blast we mentioned at the top of the show, bringing brutal cold to the Northeast this morning, especially for anybody out at the parades. Our Ginger Z is right there in Philadelphia at the oldest Thanksgiving Day parade in America. And this just in from Philly. Ginger, they're grounding some of those balloons today because of the winds. That's right. I have done this parade for years, and it's definitely the coldest I've ever had. It could end up being the coldest Thanksgiving on record here in Philadelphia. So you see the float behind me, but usually down the street, you would see balloons. Right now, nothing on the street, and that's because they're going to keep them in one area. They did blow them up. They're going to keep them in that area and just go around one block because the winds are up and because it is that cold. I mean, so cold. Let's look at some of the numbers. We're talking about the coldest in decades for many people in the Northeast, if not the coldest ever for a place like Burlington or Providence. Um, looking at some of the numbers there for what it feels like this morning, eight New York City, zero Syracuse, seven below Burlington, five in Buffalo, which, by the way, already at its coldest numbers. And then it's not going to rebound a lot. That's the whole problem with this with this parade and with others is that it's not like through the morning, oh, the sun comes out because the sun is out. That's not going to help you a ton. It's still going to feel like it's in the single digits. And by tomorrow morning, we don't go that far. 18 New York City. And by the time we reached the weekend is when we finally warm up, guys. That is just a brutal map. All right, stay warm, yeah. Ginger. So like I say, I like to say every year, it's the excuse to get in your onesie and get on the couch. <laughs> That's right. We always The snuggie, visual. too, yes, yes. ties it together. Exactly. Oh, wow, you guys are a great team this morning. <laughs> now to the biggest Thanksgiving parade, the one that's right here in New York. About three and a half million people are expected to line the streets this morning. It's going to be a cold one. They're going to brave those temperatures. Security will also be extremely tight, and Sam Champion is braving the parade route for us this morning. And Sam, the big question this morning, will those world famous balloons be grounded by the wind. Hi, Paula. Hi, Dan. Hi, Wynn. Hey, Dan, by the way, I'm wearing a onesie right now. <laughs> really? Uh, because I've got like five or ten layers on. Sam, so, you know what? So uh, just it's another already, reason to love you. Yeah. Another reason to love you. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. And of course, yeah, the big question is about the balloons. You heard Ginger talking about what's going on in Philadelphia, but right here in New York on, we're on 77th and Central Park West where it all happens. The the floats come from here, the balloons are all right there. And here's the good news. 
It's cold, but the wind isn't as bad as we thought it was going to be, and so it was up a couple of hours ago. Now it's down. The temperatures are chilly, but our wind chills aren't as bad, and those winds being lower, the magic number's 23. Above that, the, wind, the balloons cannot fly. They're pulling these balloons out. I think they'll go today. They'll make that decision just before it's go time, just before they have to take them out of the nets and walk them down. I was a local reporter here in New York back in the 90s, and it was 97 when the cat in the hat balloon got caught up in some high winds and took a pole down and injured someone who was watching the parade. So this is a very important decision to make, but I do believe the balloons will fly. So just bundle up everybody and let us do the cold, hard work for you. Can I get the gobbler sound? Because I, I kind of need to hear that, the turkey sound that we're making today. Just to warm you up. <laughs> Can we get it? Oh, he's getting it. There, there, there it is. There it is. Yes. There. See? We're ready to go. That plays every time I make a bad joke, yeah. Sam. So <laughs> we're going to hear it a lot this we're morning. We're going to hear it a whole yeah. lot. All right. They gave them the dramatic pause on that, too, mm -hmm. by the way, before they finally gave them the turkey. We'll have more on that a bit. First, though, we do want to turn to that dramatic train trouble overnight. Those Amtrak train cars separating while traveling from Albany to New York City. Hundreds of passengers were stranded in the bitter cold. ABC's Gio Benitez is at Penn Station with the very latest for us. Gio, good morning. Hey, Wood, good morning to you. Yeah, that train was heading toward this railroad station when the unthinkable happened. And now this morning, those passengers are telling their stories. Overnight, a nightmare for passengers aboard this Amtrak. I realized that we were no longer connected to the rest of the train. We're in trouble. On the busiest travel day of the year, two of the train's cars suddenly disconnected from the rest of the train outside Albany, New York. The doors appearing to fall off. Hundreds of passengers stuck on the tracks, exposed to freezing cold temperatures. A train car came loose from the train that was traveling southbound. As soon as I saw that we were detached, I felt like I was in a movie. One passenger aboard the locomotive, which was traveling from Montreal to New York City, tweeting, I heard a pop, smelled electrical burning, and felt a rush of cold air. Another adding, we are like a sitting duck on the tracks. Hours went by before the passengers were eventually transferred to another train, reaching New York City in the early morning hours. It feels great to be home, you know, home safe, and able to go and finally see all my family. And thankfully, nobody was hurt here. Amtrak now tells us it is investigating this incident. Those passengers did end up right here at Penn Station. A little late and maybe a little shaken up. At least they got where they were going. Gio Benitez, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Paula? Thanks, Whit. And new developments in that mysterious family murder and mansion fire in New Jersey being investigated as a multiple homicide and arson case. Officials believe three of the victims, the wife and two children, were stabbed and the husband shot before that fire was set. ABC's Adrian Bankert joins us now. Good morning, Adrian. What's that sad. story? It's, it's tragic. It's unbelievable. The neighborhood where this happened is in an upscale neighborhood, home to celebrities and horse sanctuaries. And this morning, investigators are not only looking into who killed the family, but why hours earlier, a num another member of the family set his own home on fire. That mysterious New Jersey mansion fire, one of the most heinous crimes local law enforcement says it's ever seen. Authorities say that Keith Canero was found shot to death outside his million dollar home. The bodies of his wife Jennifer and who they believe to be their two children, 11 year old Jesse and his eight year old sister Sophia inside. A source tells ABC News investigators suspect that all three were stabbed. Their home then set on fire. We believe that in some form or fashion that this family was targeted. And in a shocking twist, Keith's brother and business partner Paul Canero is arrested, charged with aggravated arson of a different property the same day police believe he set his own home on fire. The Canero brothers own two businesses together, a technology consulting firm as well as a pest management company. Keith was the best man at Paul's wedding. According to the criminal complaint, Paul used gasoline to ignite his own house while his wife and two daughters were inside. Thankfully, they got out safely. His attorney tells ABC News Canero will assert his innocence for the charge as well as any other potential charges. Investigators say they believe the house fires may be connected, but Paul Canero is not currently named as a suspect in the homicide case. And we really hope that we can solve this. Any leads, even if it's an indirect, please contact us. Any little piece of the puzzle might make a difference. 
Now, currently, that burned out home is still not safe for in investigators to go into. Now, once county engineers do give the all clear, they'll be able to get in and determine just how that fire started. Horrifying story. Adrian, thank you. We're going to turn now to President Trump and that public rebuke from the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, John Roberts. Roberts issuing a rare and critical statement after the president attacked a federal court and singled out one of the judges as, quote, an Obama judge. White House correspondent Tara Palmieri has more from Mar-a-Lago in Florida. Tara, good morning to you. Good morning, Dan. It was a stunning message from the leader of the high court, who has typically held back from weighing in on the news of the day. And now as President Trump vows to take his legal battles to the Supreme Court, all eyes are on Chief Justice Roberts, who could be seen as a potential swing vote. Overnight, Chief Justice John Roberts standing up to President Trump after the president lashed out at an Obama-appointed judge on the Ninth Circuit Court for temporarily blocking his executive order to curb asylum seekers. I'm going to put in a major complaint because you cannot win if you're us a case in the Ninth Circuit. And I think it's a disgrace. This was an Obama judge. And I'll tell you what, it's not going to happen like this anymore. Roberts, who was appointed to the Supreme Court by President George W. Bush in 2005, speaking out in a rare rebuke, releasing a statement saying, quote, we do not have Obama judges or Trump judges, Bush judges or Clinton judges. What we have is an extraordinary group of dedicated judges doing their level best to do equal right to those appearing before them. But the president not letting it end there, firing back, Sorry, Chief Justice John Roberts, but you do indeed have Obama judges, and they have a much different point of view than the people who are charged with the safety of our country. It's not the first time the men have come head to head. As a candidate, the now president not holding back about the judge leading the highest court. Justice Roberts turned out to be an absolute disaster. He turned out to be an absolute disaster because he gave us Obamacare. President Trump says he'll fight the ruling on the ban all the way to the Supreme Court, where he'll likely need the vote of Justice Roberts. Paula? Just a stunning war of words, Tara. Thank you for your reporting. Well, from one court to another now to the King's return, LeBron James back in Cleveland for his first game since joining the Los Angeles Lakers and fans giving him a royal welcome. ABC's TJ Holmes is here with the story. And TJ, the fans were legitimately happy to see LeBron. They just didn't really like how the game ended. Oh, look, Paul, we all know uh, relationships can be complicated. <laughs> Especially when you break up, then make up, then break up again the way that Cleveland has with LeBron James. So last night was really a night for both sides to say thanks for the memories, but for one side at least, they are still dealing with heartbreak. Welcome home, number 23, LeBron James. Like so many times before, LeBron James had Cleveland fans on their feet. But for the first time, it was in a Lakers jersey. You know, for my 11 years, I played for this franchise. I just tried to give everything I could, you know, to come back and get the reception that I got tonight. Uh, it means a lot to not only myself, but for my family and my friends that was here tonight. LeBron jerseys filled the stands for his return to Cleveland. And his former franchise even put together this tribute video. Cleveland! This is for you! Honoring the hometown hero who delivered on his promise to bring the franchise its very first championship. It's over! It's over! Cleveland is a city of champions once again! It was the city's first title in any major sport in more than five decades. The grateful cheers last night were in stark contrast to the scenes of Cleveland fans who burned his jersey and mocked his name after he left the team for Miami in 2010. And this fall, I'm going to take my town to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. His first game back as a member of the Miami Heat, it was nothing but booze. I mean, clearly there's some anger in these people in Cleveland. Eight years later, all hail the king. And look, at one point in the video last night, that tribute they put up, uh, thank you for what you do on the court, but we know it goes beyond basketball. Look, his impact on that community is going to be felt for a long time. But for the team, they're 2-14, and 14, the Cavaliers, Ooh. the worst in him. basketball. Yeah. And so people say he is directly responsible for that. So it's a complicated legacy, but there's no question what he did on the court and what he's doing in the community.
Yeah. Great he, to see the fans support him, though, like that. I mean, all the good he has done in the course, community there, especially. A long time. Yeah. And that championship goes a long way, too. It helps. <laughs> For so, it's Cleveland fans, though. Only so long, okay? <laughs> really all right, TJ, thanks. thanks. You got it, guys. We want to shift gears now to uh, holiday shopping frenzy. Some of the best deals going live just moments ago, kicking off the biggest shopping weekend of the year. Consumer correspondent Becky Worley is in our Super Savers Command Center. <laughs> We Good morning. I know I was going to say you need like a walkie talkie and a clipboard. We, we borrowed some space from NORAD. <laughs> We're tracking so. the deals, guys. We're we are tracking, tracking the, deal. the deals. All right, Becky, speaking of the deals here, uh, does Thanksgiving beat Black Friday officially now? It does. Uh, website dealnews.com tracks when the best prices hit, and it's today. Uh, this is the day to find those discounts. We see the second best day is Cyber Monday, but yep, today is the day to shop. All right, let's talk about smartphones. Some now cost more than $1,000, but th this is one of those rare days when you can actually get a discount, right? So rare. Talking about the iPhone, you're going to get a discount, but it's not from Apple, and it's not actually a price cut. What we're seeing is from Walmart. The iPhone 8 is being offered with a $400 gift card, and the iPhone XS with a $300 gift card at Walmart, and that's a sweet uh, little add-on bonus. All right, and Becky, headphones, obviously, the Bluetooth headphones, a big deal on everyone's list right now. What kind of deals are we talking about today? Huge gift option, Wit. So let's go over to Jet.com. This deal just went live. Normally, the Bose headphones are $349, rarely discounted today. They're $299. We're also seeing that over, uh, just went live at Newegg.com. That's a great gift idea. $299 is an awesome price. All right, fantastic. Uh, Becky, toys, though, and this is a different year with Toys R Us. Uh, and others, uh, you don't have that option now. Is it a good time to shop for toys for parents out there trying to get stuff for the little ones? We are looking at discounts today for toys. One we saw, these are Grumblies. They're on sale 15% off at Amazon. And you mentioned it, we are really worried about scarcity this year. So a good example of if you have a must-have pet, like this is the feisty pet. So cute, so cute. It's 10% off at Target today. But if you don't get this in time for Christmas, they sell out. This is going to be your kid's face on Christmas. <laughs> Where's my feisty pet? Wow. I don't know about the fight. I got my own feisty pet at home. His name is Nemo, 16-year-old dog. All right, Becky Worley, thank you so much. We'll check back with you later in the show. Let's go over to Dan. Thank you, Whit. It's time to get down to business. Let's kick off our annual Thanksgiving 911. We've got our Thanksgiving Dream Team. Chefs Jamika Pessoa, Jeffrey Zakarian, and Eddie Jackson. They're going to be here all morning answering your last-minute cooking questions. Right now, we're tackling turkey. Jeffrey, let me start with you. Yes. We've got a video here from Rose. Let's take a look at her question. Help! How do I defrost my turkey quickly? It's still frozen. Wow. She seems scared. Wow. <laughs> wow. She's she a lot. <laughs> that is, well, she could make a reservation at the Lambs Club and just like forget about it. That's the restaurant he owns, right? But if you didn't, I mean, always uh, defrost in cold water. I know it sounds counterintuitive. Uh, you don't yeah. want to run hot water on your turkey. Directly, Directly put it in, in cold water. Yeah. Just let it sit and put it in the fridge. It should be two or three days beforehand. If not, take the breast off and yeah. cook the breast. Uh, alone. Oh, yeah. separately. Yeah, and that way it'll get a little quicker, but put it in cold water, best way. Okay, next up, we have a question for Jamika from Alex on Twitter, who writes, what's the best thermometer I should use when roasting a turkey? Oh, wow, the digital thermometer. It's easiest and most accurate, and you stick it in the thickest part. The thigh is where you need to stick it. All right. In the no, thigh. The okay. Yes. Eddie, we're going to hit you later, because we're telling us we got to wrap. I All promise right. we'll get back to you. Let's get to Ginger in Philly. Hey, Ginger, what can you tell us? Hey there, we just bought a new turkey. That's what we did when we realized it was frozen. But you know what? We're talking about rejoicing in Paradise, California, where they cleared out some of the air because the air quality has been so bad in San Francisco with some rain. More of that where that came from. The Cold Cities now brought to you by Burlington. When you donate a coat at Burlington, it's just like giving someone a coat. It's a nice one. You get 10% off your entire purchase, and someone gets a coat. Thank you. Join Burlington's commitment to giving back. You'll feel warm inside, and so will they. She looks beautiful. Time to donate. It's getting cold outside, so... Donate a coat. Stay warm. They all did it, and so many people just like you. And together, we donated over 2 million coats. But we can't stop now. Go to any Burlington store to donate a coat and share the warmth this winter. 
bright sunshine but bitterly cold out the door this Thanksgiving morning. If you're running any turkey trots, bundle up. We'll have wind gusts to 25 miles an hour with air temperatures in the 20s and low 30s. Wind chill values will be in the teens to low 20s all day long despite high temperatures peaking around 35 degrees in D.C. For your Black Friday, it will be dry, but again, another cold day, 39. Rain moves in for the second half of your Saturday, warmer 53 and dry for the return travel on Sunday. And coming up on Good Morning America, the young American missionary who was killed after making contact with an indigenous tribe on a remote forbidden island. And that breathtaking rescue, one man catching a one-year-old baby from a burning building, what her thankful mother is saying this morning. Keep it here, much more GMA coming up on Thanksgiving. Hey, let's say I want to sell my car, but I'm kind of eh, about buying.